So uh, first of all, thank you for coming for today's uh, webinar, for HKBU webinar. Uh, my, name, my name is Frank. I think I might have already met some of you uh, in uh, the attendees. And uh, I'm the Senior Admissions Manager at HK Baptist University. So today, is what we will be doing is um, we first invite um, Dr. Huang from our Computer Science Department to give us a webinar on uncovering social networks by graph mining. It will be actually a very interesting uh, topic that uh, may be a little bit technical, but uh, it will give you some insights on how um, the uh, data network actually works. So um, today's rundown will be, uh, first we will actually have around uh, half an hour of webinar on this particular topic of uncovering social networks for graph mining. And then after that, uh, we will have around 10 minutes for question and answer questions uh, session. So um, that makes it around 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, we will have a short sharing on the admissions procedures on HKBU. Um, so, uh, so in the meanwhile, if any one of you during the lecture uh, have any questions on, uh, on this particular topic, or later on, if you have any questions on admissions, feel free to type in your questions uh, in the chat box or the Q&A tab. So we will actually get back to you on um, if there's any questions pertaining to um, today's topic, then we will answer it right after um, Dr. Huang's session. And then if you have any questions relating to admissions, uh, let me know and then I will answer, uh, do a QA and a in the last part or after my uh, quick introductions on the admissions part. So uh, let's not delay anymore and let's um, welcome Dr. Huang to, for today's sharing. Over to you, Dr. Huang. Thanks, Frank. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I know a lot of you are from high school. And uh, so today, my topic is uncovering social networks while graph mining. I would like to uh, introduce the social network with graph concept from Sketch and uh, with I, I will use the some applications and the example to make it easily to understand. So uh, we know uh, nowadays the social network are very popular because a lot of our communications are send, send well online social network and uh, uh, such an important uh, social media is uh, become more frequently used to communicate with each other and spread the information in the real world. So that's why uh, my research are also working on social network analysis. Uh, besides the, our uh, daily used actually online social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, Dingyin have attracted growing attention in both the industry and the research communities. Uh, idea or innovations can quickly appear and spread fast into the population of online social network. And uh, so to, to understand such, uh, such the dynamic of adoptions and uh, to uncovering uh, the hidden pattern on online social network are becomes uh, quite important issues because um, because we can make use of, of such pro pro properties to admin our uh, applications. Um, so today's outline of my talk includes three parts. The first part, I would like to brief uh, introduce the, the background of online social network and its applications. And then we will introduce the a graph model as the tools to analyze the uh, online social network. And uh, uh, some of them uh, belong to the graph mining technicals. And besides that, we will use, use the some, uh, some typical case studies to introduce the uh, social networks application. So what is a social network? If we search these terms on Wikipedia, you can find social network is a social structure made up of a set of social actors such as individuals or organizations and then they have relationship between that so they can become a social network and the, for social network analysis we usually analyze the structure 
and identifying local and global patterns. And uh, we would like to locate the influence entities. And also we will extend the network dynamic because the network is not static, it keeps changes. Uh, it, uh, the network may grow, may decrease. So here we saw the few examples of social networks. I think a lot of you are very familiar with this app, like Ping Interest, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Actually, Ping Interest uh, data is uh, um, content sharing service that, uh, that can be uh, shared uh, image, video, and other objects to the pinpoint. And the Twitter is the online social network service. You can send a short, uh, short message, which is called the tweets. And the Facebook is one of the most popular network. You can make, make, make friends in Facebook. And the Instagram, you can share your photos. And uh, here, uh, shows the one world map of social network in two, uh, 2021. And here you can see different country use the different social network. A uh, lot of uh, here just the source, the one major social network in each country. And uh, as you can see, a lot of country use the Facebook and in China, it used the WeChat and uh, in Australia, they use, use WK. And uh, here source, source the another uh, map, which is, uh, uh, where well, the data is collected in 2011. And uh, here you can see uh, uh, in, in that all the data, China will use the uh, Tencent QZone. And, and, uh, and here, this map is shows the trend of popular social network over past years. So you can see uh, different uh, new social media will appear and uh, you may use the different social network in different time. However, however, uh, it decided to investigate social network to discovering such uh, hidden patterns in, in, in such uh, complex the data set. And uh, actually let's take a look at uh, the scale and growth of social network. For Facebook, in 2014, uh, it uh, consisted of 8 million daily uh, activity users and 1.3 monthly activity users. And uh, every 20 minutes on Facebook, there will be 1 million leaks will be shared and the 2 million friends requests that will be sent. And also 3 million message can be sent during this uh, 20 minutes. So you can see there are a lot of data appeared in online social media. And that this map, which is visualized the friend friendship on Facebook. So here it will uh, use the Facebook users, the profile. Uh, so we will treat each city as a node. And if uh, one pair of friendship among these, among these two person, in these two city, we will draw a line. So you can see a lot of uh, with Facebook friendship appeared in uh, North American and the South American, and also Europe. There are some, uh, there are very few that appeared in Africa and uh, Russia and the China here. So now we have uh, briefly introduced the uh, social network and uh, its applications. Now uh, let's take a look at what uh, is a graph, graph model and uh, what is graph mining. Uh, graph actually is a mathematical structure composed of vertices connected by edges. So we usually define uh, a two set. So here a graph, here graph is composed of a uh, vertex set and the edge set. So the vertex can be a collection of entities uh, which have property of somehow related to each other. For example, one node 
or one vertex can represent the uh, one people or one protein or one web page, one organism. Let's take people as an example. For example, uh, this is uh, one node. This is another node. If if these two nodes have uh, edges, then we can say that uh, node one and the node two are connected together or linked together. For example, V1 and V2, they are, they are friends. So they will form the friend uh, relationship. So we call that this one is the edge. So the edge is the set of connections between what is. And uh, there are a lot of different uh, types of edges appeared in real world. For example, this can be an endpoint. This is another endpoint. And this is represent a river. And uh, uh, the, this river can, can have a uh, weight, like uh, it's uh, uh, 3.5 kilometers. So it can represent the length of such rivers. And uh, also the edges, the edges can be real and the dynamic. For example, these two person are uh, become the friends in, in 2010. However, they are broken up and they, they don't become any uh, friend in afterwards, then this age may disappear. So we can see the network of ages can be dynamic. And also uh, such age can be abstracted with physical impact like hyperlink between web pages. And it can be pure abstract, which is a semantic concept between concept. So how can we so how can we represent the social network use squad? Uh, let's take a look at this example. Uh, for this example, you can see you have nine nodes appeared in this graph. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Totally uh, nine nine vertices. And uh, actually suppose the, the node one we maybe uh, call that is Aries, Aries. And then uh, it's represent one person and the node two is can be Bob. Okay, so we regard that this is a friend, uh, toy example of Facebook graph. So you can see Aries and Bob, they become a friend relationship in this Facebook, in this graph, okay? However, we also have another person which is Jake. Every node can represent one person, okay? So you can see the node one, the node two and the node four, they don't have such age, meaning node two and the node four, they are not a friend in Facebook, okay? So, so this is a graph representation of social network. Uh, besides this, you can also use the matrix to represent the lab. For example, uh, you can see for the node, you you have totally nine nodes here. So uh, every entries between every entries, uh, we use the one represent that they have a friendship edges. And they use the yellow to represent that they don't have such a friend relationship. For example, this one represent the node one and the node four, they have a friend relationship. So you can see that it's represent this age. And uh, and here, this entry is yellow, meaning the node one and the node five, uh, they don't have friend, uh, friendship ages in this graph. You can see node one and node five, they has no age. So you can see this matrix can talk, exactly represent uh, this graph. Uh, let's check one more. For example, node, uh, node seven and the node five, they have uh, age. So you can check uh, uh, five row and the uh, seventh column. So you can find that the entry is, is one, meaning node five and node seven, they have eight. However, graph representation is uh, widely cosigned this network. However, when you use the matrix to represent, uh, you have a lot of data. So you can see, you 
suppose we have n nodes and here n is equals nine because if you totally have nine nodes and uh, you can see this matrix entries is n squared meaning you totally need 81 entries to represent such graph and uh, you can image uh, we have talked about uh, uh, in Facebook uh, you have nearly one billion more than one billion users in Facebook, then n squared would be 10 to the power of 18. So this is a widely large numbers. So when you use the, use the matrix representation, it costs a lot of memory, okay? And uh, so, uh, so graph and uh, on social network, it involves me in a lot of data. Besides a lot of data, uh, let's take a look at a real example. So Google, so Google Knowledge Graph, it has the more than 17 billion facts. And uh, for Facebook, it contains the more than 2 billion activity users. And for every user, it will have 119 flags. And for WeChat, it also has 1.5 billion users. Besides the such a massive uh, data size, uh, graph also has a lot of variant uh, kind of data. For example, graph can be used to represent the web graph, social network, protein-protein intersection network, load network, chemical compounds, uh, ontology graph. So that's why graph tool are very important. And the today talks, we will use the graph to uh, analytic our so online social network. And in high school, a lot of you have learned uh, uh, the, the, water, the water representation. Actually, such chemical compounds also can be represented as a graph. So this is a node, this is a node, they have an age, right? And, uh, and actually in a uh, research area, there are two scenarios of graph database we are investigate. One of kind is we study a collection of small graph like a chemical compounds. In a graph database, you have a lot of such small uh, graph. And uh, on, on the other hand, we will also in investigate one single graph and the such graph usually are large, for example, our social network. And the, the, today we will focus on this type. So how can we deal with the bigger graph data? So to understand our online social network, we need to analyze its property. So today we will briefly introduce the three uh, very well known property in online social network. The first one is the scale free distribution. The second one is the small world effect. The third one is the strong community structure. Let's first take a look. First one, scale free distribution. So what's scale free distribution? It's actually uh, uh, study the, the node degree distribution in online social network. So um, they found the degree is for a power law. That's meaning the fraction of uh, nodes in the network that have the X connection. Then it will follow a power law function. Let's take a look at this picture. So the X, we have two ray. One is X ray and the another is a Y ray. And for X ray, it represents as the node degree. What's called the called node degree? Node degree meaning uh, the, the age, the number of age in send to a node. For example, this node, the degree is three because it has three ages. And for this node, it, the degree is one because it has only one ages. And uh, here, suppose the one node degree is two, it will corresponding the pro probability will be high 
okay? How about if you have a large degree, for example, it's 100, then it will correspond to a low probability. So you can see uh, in, this, in this graph, in, in this uh, graph, you can see the larger degree, you will have a, a low probability. So actually this is for a power law, power law distribution. So you, for example, you said that the constant number C equals one and the alpha, which is a number no less than one. For example, alpha equals two. Then this Px is will be one over x squared, right? And this will follow this, it will follow this distribution. And if you uh, if you plot such a power law distribution in a log log scale, then you can find that it will follow this uh, a straight line in these two graphs. So this is the two real world. One is Flickr, another is YouTube. So you can see that. Uh, let's take a Flickr example. For uh, for this graph, you can see that the number of nodes, the, the number of nodes that has degree as the 1000, it's a very few, very few number have such a large degree. However, if you take a look at the degree of 10, then you can see a lot of them have such a degree, like 10,000 10, of nodes have such a degree. Okay, so this is the first uh, property of our social network. Now let's take a look at the second one. The second one is the small world effect. Actually, this is uh, very well known as the sixth degree of separation. Uh, so a famous experiment conducted by social scientists, that is uh, the average degree of nodes in the graph it's a uh, very small, they are, they are nearly equals as six. And, uh, and uh, if you use the real social network to conduct such an experiment, you can find that the average pass length is a 6.6. .6. And uh, if uh, on the Facebook, the average, well, the average distance would be 4.7, it's much smaller. And uh, besides the, uh, the average distance, we also use the diameter to measure such a small water effect. The diameter is longest shortest path in the network. So let's take a look at this example. So uh, if we measure the distance from uh, the node one to the node six, it will cost by four ages. Then the shortest distance between node one and node six it will be four. However, for this graph, this length, this path is not the shortest. So the longest path is from node two to the node nine. It will cost as the five edges. So the diameter of this network is five. And um, the third property of social network is the graph uh, consists of community structure. The network is not the plain. Actually people, in a community or in a group, they are more frequently interact with the uh, with the community member than outside of the group. And uh, to measure the community structure, you can use the clustering coefficient. It's measure the density of connection between your friends. So now we have briefly introduced the, the online social networks property. Now we will the for a typical graph mining task in online social network to issue the, the importance of social network. The first one is community detection. The second one is friend recommendation. The third one is the importance of nodes. The last one is influence, influence propagations. Let's first take a look uh, what is community. So we have introduced uh, the community is uh, a group of individuals which, uh, which have uh, densely interaction within group than outside of group. We can also co call the community as the cluster or cohesive subgraph or modules. 
And uh, let's use the, this graph uh, to, to explain the community in detail. So suppose the, the, the center wide node is you. So now you are high school student. So you have, will have a group of a group of high school friends. They, they will form the communities. So you talk with each other and play with each other frequently. Okay. Besides the, this community, you, could, you will also have uh, family members. You have uh, a father, mother, grandmother, and the aunt. And also you have uh, sister, brothers. So this is also from the uh, community. You can see these two community may have not, uh, not uh, greatly uh, overlapping. Okay, because a lot of them, they are, they, because these two are from two different communities. And then you, after your high school graduate, you may add, add them in into a uh, university, then you will have a college friend. And then suppose that you are studied in CS, CS department, you will have a CS department uh, friends. And then moreover, you may have some friend under the same advisor. So we usually, uh, models the community as a dense of a dense of, of group. So each community we can regard each component as a community. Okay. So how can we uh, found all community? Actually, there are two kind of ties or two two kind of edges along uh, in, in social network. One is a strong tie and another is weaker tie, and uh, usually. When you would like to find all community, the idea is we found such weak tie and then remove such weak tie from the graph. Then we will retrieve the remaining component as a community. There are also uh, various different intellectual studies to develop different community detection algorithms. And uh, besides the disjoint community, usually some community can be overlapping. So for example, uh, even though you have some school mate, uh, this community may be overlapping with your friend, friend community, and also may be overlapping with your society community. Because some of them are your friends, or it's a, uh, he or she may also be your school mate, it's also your uh, college. And and the uh, uh, and the community search problem is a study given a set of query node. We we would like to find the uh, the connected community contain that. For example, take a look at this example. Uh, you you query that this query, this node. You would like to find the all community contains the this query node. Then then you will uh, then you will found the, the committees. And then you can see among this large uh, network, you only found the, the query relevant committees. And uh, here we briefly introduced the two uh, models. One is cross click model. Another is the, the K-Trust model to, uh, to solve the committee search problem. So what's uh, cross click models? So let's take a look at this graph. This is a K click graph. That's meaning this is a subgraph of K node. Here K equals four. So uh, every every pair of nodes, they will have eight in this K click. And the cross click, they are now the sum eight dismissed from the graph. So this is 0 0.8 cross four click. And the cross click model they regard. So this is a dense subgraph cross click and then they have two overlap, two overlapping nodes. Then you can see, you, you can expand this such graph uh, one by one. If they have overlapping two nodes, they will, uh, they will keep it expand to, to found the communities. And this is another model, which is K-Trust, which is defined triangles. So let's take a look at this example. Uh, so the whole graph, uh, the K-trace is defined every eight, it will contain at least uh, two triangles. 
So the whole graph is two twice because every age contains at, at least the zero triangle. And the, this is, uh, uh, this part is three twice, which is contained in uh, at least the one triangle. And uh, uh, the, 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 the most dark region is four twice. Every age contains as two triangles. Okay. So the K-Trust community would like to found the uh, K-Trust and they also have the like, age connectivity, connectivity in this graph. And uh, here we saw the some real data set of social network and a lot of them have a larger scale uh, size. For example, uh, the UK 2000, 2002, they have to, uh, more than 200 million of ages. Now we will continue to introduce the friend recommendation task. So uh, do you have used the Facebook or LinkedIn? This picture shows the LinkedIn. They suggest the some friend for you. Okay, so you may interested uh, how does this server suggest that this person you may know. Let's, be, let's take a look at this uh, graph. So the friend recommendation actually also defined as the link prediction. For example, uh, this node, node two and the node four, they don't have an age before. So you, you predict the node four and the node two, they will become a friend uh, in a near feature. So this is the task of link prediction. So how can you think node two and the node four will become Become a friend. Uh, here there are several uh, solutions. The one is uh, we to predict a pair of nodes X and the Y. They will become friends. We may use the uh, the shortest path distance to measure them, and we may also using common neighbors or other advanced technicals. Okay, so. Here we will not go too into the detail very much because it's a, a, a little bit complex. So uh, one uh, the important issue is you need to measure the important of pair of nodes. And uh, the third task is the node ranking, how to evaluate the importance of nodes. So we know not all nodes are equally important in our social network. Some of them are more important. And uh, one common use the measure is to use the degree centroid. Another is to use the closeness centroid. So what's the degree centroid? Actually it's uh, measured the, the number of connection to such node. And uh, you can uh, take a normalization for such degree centroid. So, we use the example to justify. So take a look at this graph. The node four, how many nodes in center to the node four? Four ages, right? Four, five, four, six, four, three, four, one. So the degree of node four is four. And if you normalize the degree centrality, it will be four over eight. Here eight is come from nine minus one, okay? And besides the degree centrality, you can also use the closeness centrality. This is another measure which is uh, takes take the average distance. And uh, we will we will not go to the detail about uh, the closeness centrality. So you just remember for uh, to measure the importance of nodes, you can use the degree centrality or closeness centrality. There are two very basic uh, measures. Okay, and uh, now we are going to study the inference propagation. So, uh, so in online social network, people not only connected together, they also perform some actions. So they may, for example, you deliver a post on Facebook, your friends can comment your post. And then they can also uh, add some links in such in the in their comments, and uh, for other 
for, and they can also uh, like your post, and they can uh, forward your post. So in Twitter, you can you can retweet such tweets, and uh, in in some restaurant ranking surveys, you can also give some rate. So people are connected and performing actions. Uh, not only such actions, people are also affect each other uh, frequently. And the real world examples is uh, uh, hot mails, the, uh, they will attach to the one simple message after every email sent. And uh, that is the, they will make the advertisement, invite the left land to join the world last email service of with MSN Hotmail. And that once the message is sent out, other friends may take actions to join the such Hotmails. So you can see after a few months, uh, a, few, a few months, the Hotmail increased uh, to the 8 million users. So you can see online social network may become the, uh, a, a widely powerful platform for uh, for influence for influence maximization. Another example is uh, if one person buy the uh, iPhone 10 and uh, he said that it's good, and uh, he tells his friend uh, iPhone 10 is good, and if his friend adopt adopt the his opinion and go to buy iPhone 10, then we can say that uh, uh, this person is the social contagion by uh, this action. And actually this is also a, a, called a water of mouth effect. So how can we uh, maximize the, the influence over social network? The idea is we can model our social network as a directed graph and we treat every node as the active and unactive. And, and there are two well-known influence propagation models in the world. The first one is linear threshold models. Another is independent cascade, cascade models. And today we are only introduced the uh, LOTM models, linear threshold models. And the, another one we are not uh, introduced. If you are interested, you may refer the, to to other uh, materials on the inter internet. The idea of linear threshold is uh, we will take uh, the neighbor's effect into consideration. If one person's neighbors have, have enough number of active users, then this node will become, the, become the also active. So we can see that for another way, for another way, if its neighbors is active, then we will take the accumulate uh, sum of weight. And if such weight, which is great, larger than its threshold, then we say that this node will have, will become active. So in this, let's take an example. Suppose for every node, we set, set, set the threshold is 0.5. And uh, for every age, it has a weight, which is uh, one over its degree. So you, uh, at a stable zero, we can see eight, node eight and node six, they are active, okay? They are in blue or uh, green colors. Then you can see the node seven will not active in next round, but the node five will become active in next round. Why? Because it uh, totally have four, four neighbors, right? And the two of them uh, becomes active, which is greater than half of its neighbors. So the node five will become active. And then in the step two, the node six will become active. Why? Because node six also have four neighbors and the two of them become active. So the node six will become active in next step. And then at the step three, node seven will become active because three of its neighbor become active. And then node one, okay? 
and after node one, no one will become active because for the node four, they have three neighbors, but only one active. And for the node three, it also has, has three neighbors, only one active. So this is the final stage. And besides the four tasks, we have introduced committee detection um, and the friend recommendation, uh, node ranking, and the influence, uh, influence maximization. There are also other interesting and open issues. So we know in social network, we can share, uh, not only share our message, we can also share our locations. So there are also some geo social group uh, servers and the uh, uh, task can be conducted in online social network. And besides that, uh, we will also have privacy on our social network. So there are some uh, public private social network analytics can be also conducted in online social network. Uh, for example, in Facebook, we can hidden the sound of our friend from our friend list. Then no one can see such private friends, right? And also in Weibo, we can also uh, have the follow, uh, secretly follow such functions. So now uh, come to the end of this talk. We have uh, summaries. Uh, today we have introduced the social network and its uh, example and the properties. We have introduced the uh, widely used for graph tools to model social network. And uh, we typically introduce the four social network analysis task. Okay, thank you everyone. If you have any question, you are very welcome to ask me. Thank you, Dr. Huang. So uh, thank you for your content. I think a lot of it uh, surrounds how uh, if any students who are interested in pursuing a computer science and also pursuing uh, AI as part of your university major, you may also consider uh, getting a, a for your further studies with our computer science department. Uh, but um, first of all, uh, if you have any questions, uh, leave your questions in the Q&A and also the chat. Uh, but before everyone else, uh, I have actually one question myself. So uh, Dr. Huang, you actually shared a lot of um, different applications um, from the graph mining models. That, uh, may I know that, uh, do you personally know if any of, is it all of those models that you, you uh, shared today forms the basis of a lot of the algorithms that we face in Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, in in many of our social media networks, is that the case? Is it is it known to you that you know if any of just like you actually shared that Facebook uses a, a model like that? Um, is it a very common among nowadays uh, um, social media platforms? Uh, yes, I uh, for example for a uh, friend recommendation, it uh, actually appeared in a lot of different uh, social media platforms. For example, uh, even in Facebook, they will also suggest uh, some friend that you may know to add the lab. And uh, in Twitter, uh, they may found, uh, they may discover your interest and uh, recommend some uh, very well known uh, account to follow. So I think a lot of such application are really seen in our servers. Okay. Um, just uh, an interesting thought actually comes to my mind. Um, that uh, if these platforms hold all this data, knowing all the nodes, they can easily identify those um, super connectors, some that are connecting to many, many different people. And, um, and these super connectors are really the, the gears and the basics of the platform uh, information sharing between to connect all the dots together, you know, in, to, to recommend news, to recommend advertisements to recommend uh, pictures or posts to, to everybody. So is there any uh, social media platform that uh, uses a data model to uh, identify some of these super, super connectors and reward them? Is that, is that something that the platforms will do? Um, I, I believe so, but uh, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. It's the secret of uh, such social network uh, companies. Yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, because I I just thought of like um, 
because like uh, channels like YouTube will actually use mm. it, um, those with a lot of views, it will automatically invite them to be content creators and, and reward them with um, rewards sharing kind of um, uh, pro uh, profiles. But um, this is actually a very interesting concept on, on the formations and the basics of uh, the AI we see behind most of this social media platform. So uh, apart from that, is there any other questions from the floor with regards to uh, the sharing today? Okay, if um, no other questions, um, thank you, Dr. Fa, and um, we'll uh, further today's presentations with the next stage. Uh, uh, we will actually talk about the admissions schemes uh, for Hong Kong Baptist Universities for those who are around. And uh, thank you again, Dr. Fa. Thank you, Frank. I and mean, thank you, all, all, the, all, all audience. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, let me share my screen. So for the, for the audience that is remaining here today, uh, I can see that some of you are from overseas and uh, I will quickly go through uh, Hong Kong as a destination for your study. And then also we'll quickly introduce HKVU uh, and also uh, its admissions policies for the coming year. So um, Hong Kong, I think uh, for from the audience profile, I saw some from the region, from Southeast Asia, from Vietnam, from India. Um, probably Hong Kong is not nothing new for you. Um, we have always been identified as the heart of Asia in the past years because of the strategic locations. Uh, for example, the Hong Kong airport is actually connecting, uh, connected to most of the cities around the world. And um, we have always been known to have a very competitive economy. And um, to a lot of people, uh, especially those who are looking for a very safe destination for your study, uh, Hong Kong is a city with very low crime rate. And uh, Hong Kong is also the best place for you to kickstart your career after your graduations because um, the Hong Kong government actually offers a lot of um, favorable policies for undergraduate students who graduate in Hong Kong um, to look for a job in Hong Kong. In fact, uh, right after your uh, undergraduate studies in Hong Kong, you are free to choose what you want to pursue later on. You can either pursue um, a master degree outside of Hong Kong, or you want to, if you want to look for a job in Hong Kong, uh, applying for a work permit in Hong Kong is actually not very difficult. And in fact, most of our graduates will uh, can easily uh, source a job and get a job uh, before they graduate. And um, if I, I'm not sure how many of you have truly really understand Hong Kong. Uh, Hong Kong is really a combination of metropolitan and nature. Maybe you will see from the pictures, you always see it as high rise building. Um, there's actually a lot of hiking trails and also a lot of beach in Hong Kong that you can actually make use to. Um, that's actually where a lot of our international students go during the weekend. And Hong Kong is also a place with a lot of diversified cultures. So uh, moving on to the university, Hong Kong Baptist University. Um, we are a standout liberal arts educator in Hong Kong. And uh, we are one of the eight government funded university. And uh, we, regard, well, we, we welcome all races and religions, um, although our name is actually Baptist University, because that's, well, we are founded by the Baptist Convention. Um, coming to Hong Kong, it's pretty much e quite easy for most of the international students. Uh, we use English as a medium of instructions, and our campus is actually located in the city, right in the city center. So from our campus, if you want to go anywhere, any part of Hong Kong, it's very simple. We are rather... If, we if you compare our university to other universities in Hong Kong, we are a rather small to medium-sized university. And that's actually the beauty of it, if you ask me. Um, we have around 7,000 undergraduate students with around 700 something uh, faculty and teaching staff. And that gives us one of the lowest uh, faculty to staff ratio in Hong Kong that enable us to teach in small classes. Most of our lectures are within 50 uh, students in class size and we are able to build a very strong teacher-student bonding with that uh, kind of class size and uh, faculty to students ratio. And because of that, small is beautiful if, uh, uh, if you're looking for destinations, if you ask me. Um, we are able to offer ample resources and opportunities for our students, especially our international students. And that actually comes in the form of exchange, uh, overseas exchange, and uh, in the form of overseas field trips, learning us, uh, study learning experience, 
or even down to uh, facilities within the campus, uh, ease of access to most of the things um, within the campus is also a plus. Uh, so our students will have no problem looking for these opportunities. So quickly run through the programs. Um, the university is actually makes up of seven faculties and schools. So we comprises of the Faculty of Arts, Science, Social Science, Business, Chinese Medicines, Communications and Creative Arts. So you can see, uh, just as I mentioned, uh, we are a liberal arts university. So uh, we are pretty strong in terms of arts program. Um, you can look for, uh, we, we do actually offer things like, uh, in the next slides, we all the things like uh, acting, film, music, visual arts, in, uh, and then also languages, um, humanities, um, religions and translations. And other than that, we also offer very popular programs for our international students in, the, in front of uh, Faculty of Science, which uh, includes the computer science that uh, Dr. Huang is actually from. And then we also have a school of business that's triple accredited uh, that actually attracts a lot of applications from um, international students. Um, in the past couple of years, we also saw very uh, a large increase of applicants in terms of our social science program and also our communications program. So um, in these two years, we also uh, focus on uh, cross-disciplinary and transdisciplinary program. So this is something new that we wish students to only not only get expertise from one uh, particular faculties and schools, but to get uh, a wider range of um, possibilities for you to, when uh, you you have you know to learn more traits before you actually graduate. So we came up with a, a few um, cross disciplinary programs. Um, so uh, for example, we have business computing and data analytics. That actually it's a combination of computer science and business. We have arts and technologies, we, which is a combination of visual arts with um, computer science. We also have a global entertainment as a business uh, degree, and then we have our uh, innovations and health science. So it's a crossover between technologies and also social science. And then last but not least, we have a personalized pathway program to um, offer you the choice to tailor for your own program um, during the four years. So uh, for that, uh, that personalized pathway program is actually a very exciting program that we will assign a faculty member to you to tailor, have you tailor your own uh, programs and uh, graduate within four years. Um, Hong Kong is also uh, really about experiential learning. And um, in, in terms of outside of the classrooms, what we do offer to our students is student exchange, for example, which I actually mentioned for y'all, for you have a chance to actually go abroad. And then we offer, offer a lot of research opportunities as an undergraduate student. So um, be sure to kickstart on research um, during your undergraduate years. And then Hong Kong is such a business place. Um, it's, a, it's one of the best um, breeding ground for new entrepreneurships. So um, we do actually offer a lot of our students uh, across different disciplines, entrepreneurship initiatives. So we have uh, incubation centers within the, the, the campus to help our students to start your own company. In fact, we have our, our business, um, our BBA actually have uh, entrepreneurship as a major, which is quite unique among different uh, universities in Hong Kong. Outside of the classroom, um, first you will hit us, uh, once you actually come in, uh, we have the hall policies that enable uh, all of our students to actually stay uh, in the hall. Um, so um, this will be the first place for you to actually get a wide network. So uh, as what actually Dr. Huang said today, to enrich your notes and in, uh, to add more number of ages to your social network uh, through the hall, and the hall is actually the best place to start. Other than that, you can also join a club, um, open up to new experiences, um, also to serve the greater good to by joining some of our service learning be it in Hong Kong or overseas. So uh, last but not least, I'll quickly touch on admissions. For those of you who are looking to enter the universities next year in 2023, um, so uh, if you are, this is our, our university entrance requirement. If you're coming from international qualifications background, then we will uh, accept IB diploma, GC A level, we need three AL subjects, uh, SAT or any other sub uh, that are uh, entrance requirements that you may be, uh, or curriculum that you may be doing. So uh, for a full list, please check out our website. Um, and then in, on top of that, because we teach in English, so we will do, uh, we will need candidates to have English language requirement that can actually come either in the form of IELTS or TOEFL. IELTS will require an overall band of 6.0 or TOEFL will in, uh, require 79 IBT. 
So uh, if you have IB English, uh, B, uh, SL or HL, you can also use that to fulfill the English language requirements or SAT, if you have evidence based in reading and writing of 590 and above, then that also satisfies as a English language requirement. So our, our next year's intake is actually into three rounds. We will be starting our early round next week. Basically from October to November is early round, early round applications for international students. For local students, um, your, your main round will actually start from October all the way to January. So for international students, there will be three rounds. For local students, there will be two rounds, the main round and the extended round. So uh, if for international students, if you are looking for an opportunity of uh, um, scholarships, be reminded to apply in the early round and that will actually boost your chances because for international students, uh, our offer actually go, uh, will be issues on a rolling basis. So the earlier you apply, it will, be, it will actually give you a greater chance of landing a scholarship best. Um, so uh, you can just apply online and then uh, an online applications, so, which is quite quick and simple. Um, just uh, will we'll actually spend you around 20 to 30 minutes to for complete applications. You can select a maximum of two program choices. So the fees and scholarships. So the fees and expenses in Hong Kong, if you are an international student, um, so this is actually the money that you will probably have to be prepared. So for the tuition fee for the coming year, uh, it's around 18,600 US dollar approximately. So, um, and then uh, to add on to that, the student residence fees and also personal expenses that will be approximately 25 to 26,000 US dollar per annum. So that will be the fees and expenses that you'll be looking at if you are not receiving any kinds of admission scholarships from us. For, for admission scholarships, um, this admission scholarships will be automatically granted to students who are strong academically and uh, you need not apply for it separately. So for international students who are applying, then uh, you will, there will be uh, three tiers of admission scholarships, uh, namely the full scholarships, tuition waiver scholarships, and the half scholarships. The full scholarships by name goals will actually cover your tuition fees and also um, a good part of your total expenses in Hong Kong. And that will be approximately 25,000 US dollars per annum. Uh, tuition fee waiver um, will be also a very generous sum. That means you do not need to take, uh, pay any tuition fee just to get up your own expenses in Hong Kong. And a half scholarship is half the value of the full scholarships. So um, for these three categories of scholarships, um, it is uh, renewable annually, um, depending on your academic performances. So uh, to get your scholarships renewed every year will require our students to score a CGPA of 3.0 and above um, during your studies to renew it on a yearly basis. Some students may, offer, may also be offered one-off scholarships from the faculty, depending on uh, different faculties that you're actually applying to. So um, all this will be, uh, if you make an application with us, if you are qualified for any of these scholarships, um, these scholarships will automatically be uh, printed on your offer letter. You'll be notified on your offer letter uh, 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 and you do not need to apply several. So the assessment criteria will be first and foremost, your academic performances. So the stronger your, your high school, your product examinations results, your IB score, your GCA level scores will give you a bigger chance of landing an uh, admission scholarship with us. Um, also, uh, will, uh, your interview performance during the, the Check will actually be uh, decisive. So be sure to be prepared for your admissions interview. And that will actually give you a better chance of landing a scholarship with us. So um, all right, not, that's the part I want to share. And um, may I know if that's any questions from the floor with regards to uh, admissions part that I can actually quickly answer any uh, particular uh, question you may have with regards to admissions. We are slightly overrun today, but um, I think we are good to have one or two more questions, if you have. Any questions? Okay, if no questions, then uh, thank you for your time today. Um, 
thank you for your one hour of time to, to sit through these particular presentations. And I hope to see you on HKVU campus uh, early next year. Thank you.